As the name of my channel suggests, I do have ADHD and I am also an artist. This unholy matrimony has caused me to create a lot of random artworks just because it looks fun, and this time it's no different. Watch as I escalate this cute simple embroidery kit to this breakdown inducing mega sewing project filled with trial and error. Emphasis on the error. It all started from me wanting to learn embroidery. I dislike basically any time in the day when I'm idle. So when my sister bought me this cute DIY kit, I finally had something to do on the dreaded 15 minutes trip to and fro from work. This little guy here is called a lion dance. It actually looks like this. <laughs> The Lion Dance is a traditional Chinese performance believed to bring good luck and symbolizes strength and prosperity. Hang around areas with a big enough Chinese population during Lunar New Year and you'd have a good chance of spotting these performances. Now back to the tinier version! The embroidery took me the better part of a year to complete, so please don't mind my poor better instructions. <laughs> The little guy looks super adorable when you look at his front view, but the side of his face is too flat for my liking. Therefore, I'm going to perform some plastic surgery on him. I created the roof of his mouth with a pencil and acrylic marker on the extra fabric and used some scrap pink velvet for the tongue. Next, I measured and embroidered little teethies and backstitched them together. The roof of his mouth was joined to his teeth. Then, the tongue was sandwiched in between that and his bottom teeth. The bottom jaw was added in much of the same way. I changed the pattern on his face to include the jaw before I sewed on the fluffy uh, lips and cut out the pattern. Instead of making him into a plushie like the kid instructed, I decided to turn him into a little wallet. Foam interfacing was traced and glued onto the pattern to give him more form. It was then easier to attach the mouth once the flat parts were done. I added interfacing to his tummy as well and backstitched everything together like this. I flipped him right side out and then realised that his face was still too flat for my liking. So I needle felted some yarn over the fluffy parts of his face. It's pretty straightforward. You pluck out a tuft of yarn, put it where you want it and poke with this needle felting needle again and again until the yarn becomes firm to the touch. The nose was also replaced with three crystal beads. Here, I traced the shape of the little guy, now officially named Dong Chang, to figure out the shape of the inner pocket. It's really just half measurements and half guesswork and visualization. Let me know if any of you would like a detailed tutorial on this. I didn't go through much here as this was initially meant to be a shot for my shenanigans in my downtime. Once I was happy with everything, I traced the templates onto two pieces of fabric for added sturdiness and used a simple running stitch on the seam allowance to keep them together. I estimated where to place the zip and sewed everything together into a little purse. The purse is sewn right side in, while the zip is sewn right side up. The front and back paws of Dong Chang are still a little flat, so I added cotton and sealed off the area with some haphazard stitches. I then stitched the head together and slotted in the purse. The purse fits! Now I just need to leather stitch Dong Chang to the purse. Once I was done, I moved on to joining the ears, horn and tag. Now this is when the trouble begins. After I joined everything together, I realised that I cannot put my cards into the purse. I was careful to make the purse big enough to fit my cards, but I didn't expect the gap of the opening to cause a bottleneck in the entrance. Now Dong Chang is only big enough to be a coin pouch, and that wasn't my intention for him at all. So I took a break from this project and went to bed.
After a good night's sleep, I decided that since Dong Chang is now a coin pouch, then I would make him the best coin pouch a coin pouch could be. I will make him a little drawstring tangerine handbag that he can hug and stick to when I go out. Off screen, I added wires and pom pom to the back of his nose, gave him more defined teeth, added a golden bell and a ribbon loop, and hid magnets inside his little feet. Now he's complete! Now on to the bag! I started from creating a mini version so that I can get the shape right and make sure nothing goes wrong again. Um, did I mention that I have no experience making a drawstring bag? Not to mention a sphere-shaped drawstring bag. Oh, the confidence of the ignorant. Once I assumed everything worked, I resized the template bigger and traced it onto orange fabric off-screen. More interfacing was glued on top for extra structure. I marked where Dong Chang should be on the back and traced outlines for magnets. I also added a retractable wheel I bought online for a fail-safe in case Dong Chang falls off or gets knocked off the back. Holes are cut in the interfacing from the trace outlines and the magnets were secured onto the fabric with B7000 glue after ensuring that the polarities of the magnets are correct. Again, I sewed two layers of fabric together for more durability and covered the magnets and wheels with leftover fabric. It was right at this point when I was going to sew the bottom sides of the bag together that I discovered it's possible to use magnets to secure the fabric together while sewing. It might not be a brand new horizon for the rest of you watching, but it sure was a game changer for me, especially when I was making the inner lining of the bag with the same sewing steps from before. The inner lining of the bag is then sewn together at the top with back stitches. Flip the lining over. Check the alignment. And now the sides of the bag are complete. Next, I have to create the template for the hexagon shape bottom of the bag. A hexagon has six sides and can be divided into six equilateral triangles. An equilateral triangle has the same length on each side and each corner is always 60 degrees. Therefore, with the length of the side of the bag, measure an equilateral triangle and you can draw five more of the same triangles to get the needed hexagon. Okay, math nerding is over. I used the hexagonal template to make the inner and outer bottom of the bag and sewed everything together. This hole was left there because I only bought the eyelet making set when I realised I needed it for the drawstring and the reel halfway through the project. I plucked off the reel to make space so I can mark and cut a hole on the fabric big enough to fit the anvil. Then, I placed the eyelet in the anvil, followed by the fabric and the washer. I insert the eyelet setting tool and whack it hard with a hammer. Ta-da! My first ever eyelet right here on screen! The rest of the eyelets for the drawstrings are created in the same way. I drew the stock and stem of the tangerine onto the fabric. Ignore these things. I didn't use them in the end. Pegs and clips were placed inside of the bag around the opening to check the form of the bag. I had to starch and iron the hell out of it to stiffen the fabric. This is how the stock and stem looks after it was sewn together. They all have interfacing inside of them, even the leaf which I didn't film again. I'm sorry. I promise you'll watch me improve on this. Okay, now back to the video. The stock and stem wasn't big enough to cover the top, so I stacked some hexagonal EVA foam and a recycled plastic lid together to make the inside of the cover. I then glued orange fabric around it. In the meantime, I mixed gold, red, yellow, and neon orange acrylic paint to paint all over the back. This would hopefully brighten up the orange even more and give it a shiny festive sheen. I had also painted a hexagonal cover here. The smaller version on the right was made with the same method off screen and it wasn't big enough. In the end, I decided to just glue both together and slot the stock inside. The next hurdle I faced was the creation of the drawstring mechanism. Pulling the drawstrings on both sides was out, since the folds of the back and the drawstrings would be visible. 
Pulling the drawstrings on just one side was out as well, since the bag would be slanted on one side when you carry it, and Dong Chang would just kind of dangle at the bottom due to his weight. After a good few days of fiddling around with it, I managed to come up with this as a solution. Each part of the drawstrings are connected to one half of the bag strap to evenly distribute the pulling force of the drawstrings. I also added beads here to act as sort of a lock to keep the bag closed. A small carabiner was added as a stopper at the end of the straps to prevent the stock from falling off when I opened the bag. The drawstrings can also be pushed aside, making the opening big enough to use as a handbag. The bag is finally complete! I had learned a whole lot while making this project, especially on the drawstring closure technique. Next year, I want to try my hands at this again with all the experience I gained to make a better shaped version of this bag. Anyway, that's another adventure for the future me. Always follow your joy! This is Sam and see you in the next video. Oh, you're still here? Uh, this is me unboxing Lulu the piggy because I had finished editing a video. Got the secret rare. Isn't he cute? <laughs> okay, bye for real now.